Now prior to Dr. Letterman, there really was no system. There was no ambulance uh, Corps that could handle casualties so on the battlefield. So it was pretty much just private citizens? Basically, well, there were ambulances traveling with the Army, but there were few ambulances. Um, they were staffed by whoever was detailed to handle the ambulance on that time. They were never trained in how to uh, maneuver the ambulance, um, and there was never any sort of a command structure to the ambulance corps. So what was the advantage of having dedicated ambulance drivers? These are people who are actually trained in their job. These aren't people who have just been detailed from the infantry or some other branch of service to temporarily do it. So they're designated in their job and they've actually been trained in how to be stretcher bearers and how to be ambulance drivers. The ambulances are actually drilled and moving on the field efficiently because it is a really particular uh, detail of service. Um, and the Ambulance Corps is also given its own structure of command. Officers actually belong to the Ambulance Corps, and they're responsible with commanding uh, ambulances at various levels of command at the regiment, brigade, division, and corps level. So this structure allows the Ambulance Corps to actually move on its own, do what it needs to, reporting only to the medical department, and it isn't bogged down with the concerns of the quartermaster department, and it's staffed by people that know what they're doing, which is very similar to the kind of system that we take for granted today. What happens is there's, there's a great call within the federal government and the northern population for taking a real ambulance program and uh, applying it to the entire United States Army all across the country. And there's a lot of resistance from the bureaucrats in Washington and people that just don't see it as very necessary. This ambulance behind us, can you tell us about it and what makes it different than a normal wagon? Certainly. This is called a Wheeling Ambulance or a Rosecrans Ambulance, called a Wheeling Ambulance because they were mostly made in Wheeling, West Virginia, then at the time Virginia during the war. Um, and it's, it, this is really the top of the line ambulance that's available then. It's a four-wheel ambulance instead of the early war two-wheel ambulances that you often see. Um, so it's much sturdier, it's much more comfortable for the patients inside. One of the things that really distinguishes this as an ambulance uh, rather than some sort of other wagon is it's got a much more elaborate spring system underneath of here. You can see that its uh, springs are pretty heavy and those are designed to cushion the ride of wounded soldiers who are already in a lot of pain and they don't need to be jarred around further on um, uh, the rough roads of the time. Uh, macadam roads, plank roads, or just dirt roads, very uneven. So it's a very rough ride as it is. And this just helps to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, we take off the brake here. You can see that it will spring a lot and that helps to make it a much more comfortable ride for the soldiers. So how many people could be transported in an ambulance like that? Well, let's move around the back and we'll take a look. Okay. Now if we look inside, we can see that it converts. The way it is set up now, uh, we can accommodate up to 12 uh, sitting wounded. These are people who are uh, seriously wounded, but they can actually sit up for themselves. Now, if they're more severely wounded, we're gonna convert it down to beds like you might expect in an ambulance. So this will actually flip up, and it becomes more of a bed surface, and you can fit at least two, perhaps however many you can fit across there, uh, and you can take more severely wounded casualties off the battlefield in that way. I noticed the kegs here, what are those for? Uh, these are water kegs, so this would just transport water uh, along with uh, the ambulance because it's desperately needed by wounded men. Certainly the well men out there are desperately seeking water, so the sick and wounded are, are even more desperately in need of water, and these would just open up and uh, allow men to get a drink of water. Other models of ambulances would also come with water kegs, um, but they would hang between the wheels. Uh, this one is the only one that actually has the water kegs built right into the structure of the ambulance. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.